It's the last professional MasterChef quarter-final. And these six talented chefs are back to face two more challenges, set by chefs Monica Galetti and two Michelin starred Marcus Waring. It takes out of you this competition, but every minute of it's worth it for me. There's no rest on laurels or anything like that. It's a case of going in and smashing it, really. I really want to beat the boys today, and I will. <laughs> First, they will have to survive the ultimate invention test. This is going to put these guys through the mill. Then the best of them will need to win over the country's most discerning food critics. This is a dish I'll remember, a dish I'll talk about. Only the strongest will go through to the semi-finals. Welcome to your quarterfinal. This is an invention test. Please reveal your ingredients. What you have in front of you are bowls of scraps and trimmings. We don't want the obvious dish. We want something creative, something a little bit different. We want it to look good and we want it to taste good. You've got an hour and 15 minutes to create your dish. Good luck, and off you go. The meat trimmings include chicken wings, bones and gizzards, beef shin bone and pork skin. The fish scraps include a fish head and bones. There are also some fruit and veg trimmings and some larder ingredients. I want to see the chefs stretching themselves. It may be just bowls of scraps, but there is a dish in there, and I really want them to find it. Yeah. They've almost got to be a magician here today and create from these scraps. Twenty-six-year-old Ben is a sous chef in a Michelin-starred restaurant in Kent. Ben is a chef who started to impress for the right reason. He's a chef who has an allergy to fish, yet still prepared the cuttlefish very well on my round. His last test with me was very, very good indeed. I think there's more to come with Ben. Ingredients are definitely key for me. No matter what you do with a bad ingredient, there's always going to be a bad ingredient. You can't make something bad good, unless you're Jesus. Hopefully I won't have any shockers today. OK, Ben, here we are, quarter-final. Yes, yes, Chef. How are you feeling? When I first lifted the thing, I was a bit worried. Yeah. Um, but now I'm sort of working my way around it. I'm sort of sussing it out as I go. So I'm going chicken. I'm going to do chicken wings, mm. uh, confit and egg yolk and do a chicken and onion broth with all the bones that are in the okay. bucket as well. And then use a couple of the stems, veg stems and stuff like that as a bit of a garnish. Okay. Try and come up with something, hope it looks all right. Are you, gonna come, are you coming out fighting? I'm, I've never really been that good at fighting, to be <laughs> honest. We are looking for a really, really good dish. Yeah, and hopefully I can give you one. Ben is using the pressure cooker to make his broth, you know, and he really coloured off the bones that he's got in there and the onions to get lots of flavour. He doesn't want to make a consomme. He's not that interested in it being clear. He's also using some stems of the vegetables and some shallot rings. I think Ben's dish is still developing and he will be revisiting the bowls again. Thirty-four-year-old Brazilian Luciana is a private chef. Luciana produced a fantastic plate of food. It just tasted divine. She is a real talent. In my round, she was almost hyperventilating. I just hope Luciana will be able to stay calm and focus and create another one of her wonderful dishes for us. My mind, when I'm cooking, I think about like 20 things at the same time. 
And if I have a potato in my front of me, I have like a 20 ways to do a potato. My head just works like that. I think that's my strongest point. How do you feel about being in the quarterfinals? I feel so happy. Yeah? Yeah, very happy. I think I have done a, a bit of uh, a good job, but I have to improve more because every day is a challenge. And what do you think of this challenge? Very different, very different. Uh, and I'm very excited to do it, yeah. I like it. So have you found something to use? I'm going to do a crispy uh, bowl, like a croquette. Everybody likes a croquette. And you're fighting for that place in the next round? Yes, I am. Yeah. Get those claws out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you. Luciana is, is going to make us a large croquette served with a pom puree on the bottom. So she's making a little bit of a duck cell from the mushroom trimmings to, to mix through those chopped up ribs. She hasn't yet decided what sauce is going to accompany her dish. Oh man, come on. Interesting. I love the sound of Luciana's dish. One thing Luciana does need to be careful is that it's just not too simple. Thirty-two-year-old Richard is a sous chef at an events company in London. He made us that wonderful baked apple dish and took simplicity to, to a really great level. He's a very, very talented chef, very calm, stands back, has a look at the challenge in front of him and delivers. I think the key to being a good chef is to stay calm under pressure. You can't, you can't flap about. So what's the dish? I'm going to do, use the cheeks. I'm going to serve that with um, like a chicken broth, some pickled cauliflower. I've also got the pig skin. And I'll put that in the freezer just to set up a bit and I'll try and get some uh, crispy pig skin as well. How far down the line are you thinking? End of today. Just end of today? Yeah. Just end of today. Still here, hopefully. It's, yeah, definitely, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Richard's doing a chicken broth. He's not using a pressure cooker for his stock. He's doing it the classical way. Is he going to have enough time to get a great flavour out of those few bones? Chefs, you're halfway. 25-year-old Toby is a head chef at a gastro pub in Kent. Toby's the chef has a beautiful eye for dressing a plate. His first dish was that wonderful dessert, but it was incomplete. My life outside the kitchen is pretty non-existent, but that's what you sign up for as a chef. You have to be that dedicated and that involved to get anywhere, and I think that's part of the reason I've got to where I am today, and I've got so much knowledge, because that's all I do. Toby, how are you? I'm actually pretty good today. Basically, this is going to be um, like a lemon posset set inside a bowl, which I'm going to brulee the top, serve with a smoked orange like, biscuit, with a berry cream. Wow. It's very calm. <laughs> yeah, well, it's pastry. I'm kind of, it's, it's what I do, so I'm pretty calm. Is this going to be an, our first complete dessert from you? Fingers crossed. Yeah. Well, all being well, the posset goes to plan. We should have a complete, nice tasting, nice looking dish. This is a test to use the scraps. He's using the cream, the sugar, and the lemon zest from the larder. There's a lot more that he could reach for to make a pastry dessert. What I find really funny about Toby at the moment, he's just doing a lot of looking around the kitchen. He looks like he's sort of in no man's land. Twenty-six-year-old Sam is a sous chef at a Somerset hotel. Sam is a young chef who's chosen to learn cookery from the classics, and I really respect that in him. Thoroughly enjoyed his first dish. He doesn't venture out into the, the modern world of food. It's a chef who really understands his roots, his foundation of his industry. I think I've stuck to what I've said the whole way through with uh, traditional, classical, simple cooking. Um, I haven't strayed away from it. So maybe I might have to step up my game in the sense of using a few more modern bits of equipment to show that I can use them. You right, Sam? Yes, thank you. 
tell me what it is, what, what is it you're making? I'm doing like a little taster of chicken, so I'm going to use the chicken wings. Um, so I've sealed them off, I'm just going to roast them off. I'm going to make a chicken liver parfait and I've made a chicken sausage. So I've made a chicken mousse, wrapped the skin around it, I've cooked it in a water bath and I'm going to seal the chicken off so it's nice and crispy. You are enjoying the challenge. I love this challenge. How's I've never feel? really used the scraps before, but yeah. for me it's quite it's interesting and I'm quite enjoying it. Let's hope this plate guarantees you that place, huh? Thank you. Sam's doing an assiette of chicken, which is very impressive if you think there's not a lot of chicken in the bowl. He's also made a little boudin out of the offal and the, some of the chicken flesh. I think he's being very imaginative with his dish. If he does the same with the garnishes, plus a nice light red wine sauce, wow, sounds like a really tasty plate of food. Chefs, you have 20 minutes left. 24-year-old Danny is a sous chef at a fine dining restaurant in Newcastle. I like Danny because I think he has an amazing eye for detail. I thoroughly enjoyed his signature dish. Monica, I could have put that on my menu in my restaurant. It was that good. Danny was outstanding from the beginning. However, the time pressure really does have an effect on Danny. Are you stirring that bowl or is it just your hand shaking? Bit of both, I think. He's a chef who's quite a thoughtful one and, and likes to, to be precise about what is going on the plate. It's paramount to have a good quality ingredients. Um, you should never have to work too much with an ingredient. I just really don't like messing around with food. It's like keeping it nice and simple. Hey, Danny, good to see you. Good to see you, Monica. Have you managed to find, find some inspiration in here? Um, I found some inspiration. I know what I'm doing. It's just I, I don't enjoy this task. So, Danny, what are you making? There's going to be various elements. There's chicken on there. Um, so I've got some chicken wings, some caramelised onions on there, some chicken livers, some brandy, a uh, little cream. You have sifted through it quite a bit. You've got a few things there, yeah. haven't you? I'd much rather have some nice prime cuts to work with. But... And maybe another hour to organise yourself. Yeah. Not going to happen. Just write some nice lists and <laughs> things like that. He's not enjoying it, but he better start enjoying it quick because good food comes out when you're enjoying it. Having said that, Danny will come up with the dish. He's doing chicken wings that's honey roasted in cumin, bone marrow dressing, he's doing chicken livers with crostinis. I just hope he puts enough heart and soul into this dish. Chefs, you've got four minutes left. One minute left. Stop cooking. Ben has used the chicken scraps to make a chicken broth. He's serving it with a confit egg yolk, boned crispy chicken wings, deep fried crispy shallots, spring onion tops, and some pickled mushrooms. It's a refined dish with a sort of a classic chickeny flavor coming through. It's not too strong, it's not too reduced, it's nice and light, but the egg yolk adds a beautiful richness to it that brings the dish together. But the surprise of the pickled mushroom yeah. is a delight. That's a last minute thing. It's that a delight, it really is. Minute, yeah. Nice little touch, well Cheers. done. Thanks. Everything on here has hit you in the mouth with bangs of flavour. I think you've done really well. Thanks. You ought to pat yourself on the back for that. Cheers. I'm pretty relieved. It couldn't really have gone much better, to be honest. Unless everyone else has done ridiculously well, I should be all right. Richard has also made a chicken broth. He has served his with a white onion puree, crispy pork crackling, pickled cauliflower, and cod cheeks.
cod cheeks cooked very well, seasoned quite well too. And I like the, the pickled cauliflower that goes with it. Everything is there, the seasoning is great. You know, you've cooked it well, but I don't think the broth packs as much flavor as, as it should. It needs a bit more of a oomph for me. Okay. Maybe the broth could have just done with a little bit more reduction. Yeah. If you just take the flavor to another notch, you'd have a sensational dish there. Sure. If I had more time, I obviously would have reduced it more, but it's a pity, pity I didn't get it down to the right kind of consistency and the right flavor. Luciana used the beef trimmings to make a bone marrow and beef croquette, served with potato mousseline, a broccoli stalk, and a red wine reduction. Your croquette is very well made. It's very moist, you can taste the mushrooms in there, you can taste the beef in there. It's lovely and crispy on the outside. Your, your sauce was very well made. Some great techniques here from, from a great cook, but uh, I think today you went for a safe option. The plate is very neat and clean. It's just it's not a plate of food for me. It's something that I could pick up and eat as a bar snack, and, and that's not what, what I was looking for. You're a very good cook, Luciana, and I think there's more that you can give to this plate of food. When I saw the ingredients, so many things came in my head. I don't know, I don't know how I decided to do this croquette. <sighs> if I could come back now. <laughs> Danny has called his starter chicken and onion. It consists of chicken livers sauteed in brandy and cream with marmalade onions. Honey and cumin glazed chicken wings, pickled broccoli, endive and a marrow vinaigrette. crostini with the almost marmalade uh, flavoured onion, the livers, goes very well. And the sharpness comes from the, the fennel that you've pickled. I, I think the chicken wings are cooked very well. Some great things on this plate that I do like. I like your idea. I think to cook the chicken livers and still have them nice and pink is, is a very, very good thing. The, the onion, I would have preferred that personally to be a little bit more refined. It just looks a little bit on the rustic side. There should be more sauce, it's a lovely flavour. The dish needs more of it. You almost want something to be coated in the sauce. It's a good dish, Danny. Um, it's not your best dish. When I walked in and we lifted over the cover, we saw what we had. Um, I wasn't impressed at all. Coming up with an idea from scraps might be fun if you had three hours, four hours. Um, but to come up with a dish in that time with scraps is not fun. Sam used every single chicken scrap to make a chicken taster plate. Chicken liver parfait with croutons, chicken mousse wrapped in skin, honey glazed chicken wings, and chicken hearts. It's garnished with chard, peppers and onions, and a red wine reduction. I really admire the amount of things that you've done. Making a parfait out of scraps is not an easy thing to do. The croutons are crispy. The chicken is probably a little bit overcooked for my liking. The dressing is a sharp reduction. It's a very sort of traditional, classical feel about the dish, which is what you're all about. And today I was hoping to see a little bit of extra flair. The garnish in the middle, I, I honestly, hand up, don't know what to make of that. There's some raw red wine taste coming from it. You know, what you have here is some great little ideas and, and different things, but they've not come together to create one finished plate of food. I think the techniques I used impressed them, but I think the plate and upside of things, I know I need to work on, and they know I need to work on it. Toby used the ingredients from the larder to make a lemon posset. He served it with a berry cream and shortbread biscuits and topped it with spun sugar. This is a disaster. It's quite obvious to see Toby is not set. You've got the recipe wrong because 
from my experience of pastry, a posset can be set in no time at all in any fridge. Yeah. You know that, and yeah, I, I know that. Know. Yeah. Back to the drawing board, huh? Yeah, I think so. I just kind of wanted to do something that looked nice, tasted good, and it didn't pay off, so, yeah, going home. I really enjoyed watching these guys cook today. They did a great job. There were some issues, there were some errors, there was some confusion, but we did get some good food at the end of it. Unfortunately, I think Toby had the worst day of the lot today. I agree, I agree. Ben's dish was fantastic. He brought real true flavour of chicken to the plate. Great job. We have Richard, who also uh, attempted a broth. Um, his presentation, also very stunning. It tasted nice, but I think once you've had a knockout broth, it's going to be pretty hard to live up to that. But I think he did a great job today. I think Danny cooked really well. He cooked at a very high standard. There's things on there that I would like to have seen that could have been refined a little bit more. But in saying that, he ventured on and he didn't give up. He gave us a wonderful looking plate. Luciana can cook. Monica, the croquette was very good. There is absolutely no two ways about that. But the whole dish for me was just an extension of a bar snack. I don't want to go and I don't think I'll eat a croquette again in my life. <laughs> Where Luciana was quite minimal in, in her food and presentation today, we have young Sam who actually did a lot of processes, yet it just was not a harmonious plate. I'm more worried today than I have been the last couple of rounds, um, but it is tough out there today. Fingers crossed that I can continue. never going to be easy cooking with scraps but we have made our decision the first chef leaving the competition is Toby the second chef leaving the competition is Sam. Uh, overall, I'm proud of myself. I'm happy with what I've done. I'd change a couple of things, but when the pressure's on, it's hard to think as fast as you want to think. Uh, I kind of knew it was coming um, after the last round. Um, yeah, a bit bad. Chefs, congratulations. You're through to cook for our critics. Well done. Great job. <laughs> Chefs. You're going to be cooking today for three of the toughest critics in the country. They are there to find the errors, but they're also there to spot a star. You have one hour and 15 minutes to cook two courses, main course and a dessert, four plates of each. Off you go. I'm worried about today. It's the first time I've felt like proper nerves. The stand is amazing. Yeah, I'm up against three great chefs, so it's going to be a tough one. I know the time issue is a big thing, but I I don't want to I don't want to go today. I really don't. <laughs> I'm really really excited about today. I really want to see them shine. The question is, can they hold their nerves and can they get it out on time? It's going to be an interesting battle because I know for sure not a single one of them is ready to go home. There is more pressure on today because these are our dishes and we should know what we're doing. I'm going in lightly confident, um, not too cocky, I still need to work hard. 
I think they are going to be impressed today. I think they're going to enjoy them. Danny, are you confident these dishes will please the critics and us today? Yeah, I am. Um, they're not the most technical dishes in the world. They're not the most, there's no molecular, none of that carry on. Um, the nice, tasty dishes. So what is it? Um, we've got uh, 45 degree salmon. Um, <laughs> Nothing technical about that, is there? No. It's just salmon that's cooked nicely, isn't it? Um, and blowtorch on top of that again uh, for the bitter notes, just to take away the sweetness from the dish. Um, we've got that with some curry flavours, some curry oil and uh, variations of cauliflower. And your dessert? Uh, the dessert is just a nice rice pudding with a raspberry jam jelly and peppered honeycomb. Ooh, rice pudding. A real rice pudding? Yeah. Wow, that sounds great. Everyone loves rice pudding. We do, we do love a rice pudding. We love pudding. rice pudding. Danny's back in his own zone. He is absolutely all over this challenge. The salmon cooked at 45 degrees in a water bath. He says he's not cooking technical, but he really is. That's a lovely way of cooking salmon. There could be some things that could go wrong. Cauliflower, the puree is not smooth. The little florets that have been deep fried could be soft. There's the attention to detail that we're looking for. Danny's dessert has got me hungry. I want a decent dessert and rice pudding is it for me today. With the addition of raspberry jelly jam, it should have that sharpness to offset the sweetness of the rice. I hope he doesn't overcook the rice. It's one thing I can't stand is overcooked rice pudding. Chefs, you've had 15 minutes. I've cooked for critics before, not knowingly. They just turn up in your restaurant. I've had a few good reviews, I think. A couple of, you know, hit and miss ones, but um, above average, let's say. You must be quite pleased delivering such a fantastic dish in the scraps test. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I was a bit worried when I first saw it, and I was quite amazed with what I came out with. I was impressed myself. Good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm nervous today. Are you? Are you? Yeah. I've Why? Just. Overthinking it, I think. What are you making for us? I'm um, doing Iberico pork presser. It's a cut between the shoulder and the okay. uh, loin. Okay. Um, with uh, pelagic clams, a few turnips and girolles. And I'm doing a milk chocolate dessert. Just a couple of textures of chocolate. I'm trying to push it within the time restraints. Right, you've got a lot to do, so I'm going to let you get on with it. Good luck, Thank, ben. thank you, Ben. Ben's cooking today is a cut of pork from the shoulder. The meat in the raw state looks fantastic. The marbling is beautiful. He's cooking the pork in a sous vide bag and then finishing it in the pan just for a little bit of colour on the outside. But you have to get your temperatures right and you've got to make sure that the timing's right so that the marbling is really working its moisture through the meat as it's cooking. For dessert, he's got textures of, of chocolate, or he's called it milk and chocolate. White chocolate clusters. He's got an aerated milk chocolate. I love the sounds of that. And then he's got a bitter chocolate sorbet. I love a great bitter chocolate sorbet when it's done right. I think if Ben has tasted everything here, it should work wonderfully. This is a chocoholic's dream dessert. My food needs to be perfect, because if it's not perfect, I'm not staying here. So every single detail in my dish will be perfect. Luciana has come in today and she's making us a taste of Brazil with her twist in it. She's making a duck dish with manioc, which is a bit like cassava. She's serving it with something called farofa, and it looks a bit like a, a very fine couscous, which she's mixing with the chorizo and, and black beans. For her dessert, she's using ake berry. She's making a sorbet with it. These berries are supposed to be a super bower ingredient, it's supposed to revive you. And get rid of all the grey hair marks. <laughs> <laughs> Luciana, how are you? I'm uh, very good, very good. A little bit anxious. Uh, apprehensive, but uh, I think it's going to work. 
the inspiration is uh, my Brazilian cooking uh, with uh, some modern techniques. So who supported you throughout this? My husband did a... That's enough. That's enough. He's very proud that yeah. he just he... said to be like a, be yourself. Yes. And uh, he knows that I can do it. Okay. Wise man. Yeah. <laughs> Time is definitely my main enemy today. I'm going to have to work so fast it's going to be ridiculous. So hopefully they don't come and uh, talk to me for too long because I'm going to really need to push on. Okay, Richard. Yep. Tell me, what are you doing today? I've got uh, butter roasted halibut with salsa fee and a muscle reduction. Okay. And then for dessert, I've got chocolate parve with caramelised banana and pecans. Every time you've ever said a menu to me, you've always kept something back. Yep. <laughs> what? Are you Give me some more. So I'm making almost like a bisque with the, with the vegetables. I'm going to use uh, the mussels. That goes straight in. Stock with the mussels you're yeah, going to use? Yeah, pass them out, obviously, and then reduce, reduce. Okay. Get, get the flavour in it. Good. But hour and 15 minutes, eight plates of food is it's not a lot it's of time. It's tough, isn't yeah. it? An hour and 15 minutes. And, and that, on top of that, you've got to cook for the critics. Yeah. That's not going to fluster you today, is it? Uh, no, they're just another customer. Great stuff. Thank right. you very much. Crack on. Thanks. It's just another customer. What a fantastic attitude. You cannot ask for more from a chef to treat every customer the same. A halibut's a fantastic fish to pan fry, even better when you're gonna be pan frying it with lots of butter. There's a little layer of fat that comes underneath the skin that I think always enhances the flavor of halibut and helps to sort of self-baste it. Pan frying fish is a skill making sure that you get the temperature in the pan right so that you can seal the fish and it doesn't release all the juices. You start to release the juice into the pan, the fish starts to poach. This dessert sounds divine. Chocolate, rum, bananas, pecans. I read that on the menu and I'm ordering this pavé. I hope he's got enough of that extra bit of chocolate and the texture should be lovely and smooth. Chefs, you have 15 minutes left. I'd like some passion, I'd like a bit of enthusiasm. I'd like a good dinner. It's my job to look at food, think about it, taste it, and speak honestly about it. You just gotta keep us happy. How difficult can that be? Afternoon, gentlemen. What I find thrilling about this competition is that you do come across people you might otherwise never have heard of. Finding talent, raw talent, as it's breaking through, that's thrilling. Luciana, you've got five minutes left. You gonna be okay? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Luciana's main course is smoked up with manioc puree, black-eyed bean and chorizo farofa and glazed peaches, and I don't know what half of that means. So she's successfully bamboozling her diner. Shaky, I'm shaky. Oh. Ignore us. Ignore him, <laughs> OK? I'm on your side. I like smoked duck. I wonder if she's smoking it herself. I assume she's brought all these amazing ingredients together because she knows what she's doing. So, Luciana, you've got two minutes left. That's the farofa with black eyed beans and chorizo. Okay. You're doing fine. Good That's job. Good. Done? Done. Give them a big smile. Yeah, well.
Good afternoon. Luciana has served smoked duck breast with pureed manioc or cassava, black-eyed bean and chorizo farofa, which is a Brazilian dish made with toasted cassava flour, butter and salt, glazed peaches and a red wine sauce. It looks good, it smells nice, she knows how to dress a plate decoratively and I'm, I, I quite want to eat that. She's cooked that duck beautifully, just right, not too pink. Then you've got this amazingly rich sweetness of the peach. I love that puree. I think this is quite memorable. The crispy bits round chorizo y sort of thing, they're very nice. The jus is very nicely made. In terms of this competition, this is a very solid and characterful piece of cooking. Mm. I think the duck is beautifully cooked. I love the flavour of the puree. The bean and the chorizo sausage complement the duck really well. I think it's excellent for Luciana. I think it's a great tasting plate of food. Ice cream. Luciana's dessert is acai sorbet with granola, meringue and coconut. Acai berries are meant to be very good for you, apparently. I'm not actually looking for my dessert to cure me of all known ills. In fact, if it's a good dessert, it should make me feel slightly bad about myself. Luciana, how's your sorbet? It's still not um, firm enough. Let me have a look. You'll be all right with this, darling. Leave it till the last minute. OK, thank you. Luciana's dessert is acai berry sorbet served with granola, Italian meringues and coconut. It actually looks like a helicopter shot of a crime scene in a forest. Any minute now there's going to be a dead smurf hiding beneath the ake sorbet. In fact, the sorbet, the acai sorbet is quite a nice, fresh thing. It eats like breakfast, just not one I actually want to eat. It's... This is just granola, with a, a very, very sweet sorbet, an even sweeter bit of meringue, and some insipid raspberries. I like the presentation. It's interesting. I've never seen a sorbet dressed like that before. I've loved the first dish from her and I was hoping it was going to replicate in her dessert, you know, more amazing flavours and all I've got is a lot of sweetness and sugar. I'm loving the Brazilian influence in Luciana's cooking, I think it's really interesting but I don't think the dessert's quite up to it, to be fair. Oh my lord! Oh, it's cream. Richard, you've got Chef. three minutes left. Wait. Richard's main course is butter roasted halibut, mussel reduction, spinach and salsify. Spinach, we like spinach. Uh, salsify, we like salsify. It shows promise. Halibut ain't cheap. You better get it right. Happy with it? Uh, yes, chef. Yeah. Is that it? Just the sauce? Just sauce, chef. Yeah. Okay. Go. Okay. Go. 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 
Richard has pan-fried halibut in butter and served it with mussels, spinach, salsify, samphire, and a mussel reduction. It's a very nice piece of fish. For me, it's perfectly cooked. The greens are very nice, the mussels are sweet. I always like samphire. I think it's a very nice plateful. Is it massively inventive? No, not particularly. But there is a killer sauce. I think it's a cracking piece of cookery. It looks stunning and it tastes really good. It just seems a bit safey safey. Attention to detail is there. It's an accurate, very, very precise plate of well-dressed food. Richard's dessert is dark chocolate pavé, pecan, caramelised banana and rum cream. These are lots of lovely things, very sweet. My pancreas may not thank me for eating it, but the rest of me will. How are you looking, Richard? Yeah, good, Chef. Just um, about to get the bananas in and rocher cream, and I'm ready. The cream is ready? It's in the fridge? Yes, yeah, in the fridge, Chef. Wonderful. Richard's dessert is a dark chocolate pavé served on caramelised pecans with caramelised banana and rum cream. You kind of imagine that Richard has a really tidy sock drawer. Yeah, Richard has a sort of military precision about him. Everything is sort of right and exact and constant. It is very, very good. Perfectly textured, deeply warming chocolate. It could actually do with a little shot of something really sweet in there. The caramelised banana could be just fired up with a real thick crunch of caramel. But otherwise, you know, that's a, a beauty. It's a work of art. I'd take it home and hang up my wall and then lick it off the wall. I think it needs a different element of flavour. It's a great dessert but I need some more rum in it. The best thing about this plate for me is the banana. It's a lovely flavour, it's a sweet flavour. It's, it's one of those perfect ingredients. That was tough, really tough. Um, didn't go quite to plan. A um, few elements I wasn't happy about, but it was, it was all on time. Time restriction was against me, so, so yeah, it was tough. Danny, you've got three minutes. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. You're good? Yeah. Ready, ready to go then? Yeah. Danny, main course, 45 degrees C, salmon, cauliflower, curry. Well, I really like curry, so that'll be all right. <laughs> what I really have yet to acquire a taste for is sous vide water bath fish cookery. A bit of searing, a bit of colour on the top of it would save it from being, you know, a savoury jelly. What's left to go? Just the beignets need to go on now. Please do this, Danny. Oui. Yeah? Good to go? Three of your best plates. Yeah. Well done, eh? off we go. Thank you. Danny's main course is 45 degrees salmon, cooked in a water bath and seared. 
He's serving it with cauliflower puree, cauliflower beignet, cauliflower florets, and cauliflower couscous, pickled sultanas, parsley, and curry oil. It's a fairly elegantly put together plate for, but it's the vivid yellowness of it that's sort of troubling. I like the cauliflower. Cauliflower puree is nice, the little beignets are nice. The salmon, you could not persuade me to eat it. This technique doesn't improve the fish. You're left with pink flob of the worst kind. I can see he can do lots of stuff, but this plate just doesn't do it for me. I think it's beautiful, stunning colours. Great ideas on the plate and the, the curry is very light, it's not overpowering in any way. I think the salmon is melting in the mouth, the cauliflower couscous is delicious. The raisins add a fantastic freshness to the plate, I think it's fantastic. Dessert is warm vanilla rice pudding, raspberries, spiced honeycomb. Delicious, bring me a bowl of it now. It's one of those dessert titles that makes you go, yeah all right, I'll have a bit of that. Finishing touch is done? Yep. Done. Okay, take your best plates. Nice. <laughs> nice, very nice. Danny's vanilla rice pudding is served with raspberry jelly jam, fresh raspberries, and spiced. Honeycomb. The rice should be melting and, and sweet and milky, and it's none of those things, and it's the wrong colour. It's difficult because rice pudding is a simple thing, but when you start adding another five elements and some herbs, poor rice pudding can't really cope. My childhood is dying on the plate in front of me. I love the richness of it. I think the raspberry jam jelly is fantastic. That lovely little bit of fresh cold acid. The little bitterness of the honeycomb crunch as well. So he's given the dish texture. I think the dessert is divine. I hate that I've got to share this with you. It's a good dessert. This is how you make a rice pudding. Mentally, it shattered me. Um, physically, it just another day in the kitchen, but mentally, it, it's killed me like, yeah. Ben, yep. you've got under 15 minutes. Is okay. everything all right? Going uh, to plan? Yeah, just about. Ben is doing Iberico Pressa and Clam, so that's pork and clam, which actually sounds like quite a nice traditional thing to eat. Proper bit of um, surf and turf. Iberico pork is what's left when the other legs go off to be turned into hams. It's really nice, it's really fatty, it's got lots of flavour. OK, Ben, you've got, th you got three minutes left. Yep. Nice and pink, you all right with that? That's how I wanted it. I was a bit worried about it, to be fair. a little unsure. Yeah, he didn't feel confident. He's not confident with no. this, is he? Ben's main course is Iberico presa, or pork shoulder, served with pelord clams, baby turnips, bickle gerols, sea aster, 
which is a wild plant found in estuaries, and a Madeira jus. It's an attractive looking plateful. The meat looks to be quite well cooked. Um, there's not enough jus. I like the mess of green things and clams on the right. I'm, I'm quite keen to get on with this. It's a wonderful piece of pork, really flavorful. And this is a great advert for turnips. Cooked just right, a little bit al dente, really sweet, beautiful. This is a dish I'll remember, a dish I'll talk about, you know, a combination of ingredients that will stick in the mind for a bit. This is a good plateful of food, well cooked, sensitively cooked, jolly and unfussy, and uh, I really like it. The pork is, is, is an interesting cut, great idea to use something a little bit different, and the garnishes do work and they've been very beautifully dressed. I, I love the ideas that Ben has, has come with. Um, he went through all the effort to make a, a great sauce, yet left it to, on the side and only drizzled it enough. It's lovely to drizzle a sauce, but you need more to serve with it. But I think this dish has great potential. With Ben's dessert, milk and chocolate, those are two ingredients which really go together. I await with anticipation to see what he's going to do. You've got two minutes left. Yeah, cool. So you, you've got everything ready? Yeah. Wonderful. Feeling happy? Um, so, uh, yeah. so, so. What have you got left to go? Uh, milk, maybe some chocolate for that. We'll have that one. Yeah, just like the others come out all right. Come on. Sorry about the presentation, guys. Ben has called his pudding milk and chocolate. Bitter chocolate sorbet served with milk mousse. Milk nuggets, aerated chocolate, and dolce de leche. It ain't pretty, but it is clever. It's a bunch of things made out of chocolate and milk which go together really, really nicely. Made by someone who understands the importance of a really sweet hit at the end of the meal. William, have you finished all of yours? Not quite. <laughs> I think the actual chocolate sorbet is really, really good. Mm. It's nice, high cocoa chocolate. And it's got a really nice bitterness to it. That was a great dish. It was so deeply chocolatey, and there were these bits of texture within the sorbet, biscuity bits. And it's gutsy, and it's new, and it's original, and it's utterly delicious. I really like this dessert a lot. I am a big chocolate fan. I love the milk foam. I really love the aerated chocolate. The cleverness of the dessert, I think, is very, very, very special. I'm planning great things, but it's how my hands are hard. It's higher. Today's been a fascinating day, and I've thoroughly enjoyed watching them cook, and I've really enjoyed eating their food. We've seen some great cooking from, from our four chefs. Overall, I'm quite proud of what they've done today, what they've achieved throughout. I really enjoy Ben's cooking. He's one of the young ones that come in here, pushes the boundaries. Ben's dessert was really interesting. What you had here was lots of different flavours of chocolate. It was fantastic. Richard cooked his fish very well. That sauce had so much flavour, and everything that was placed on that plate was, was with care and with thought. It was a wonderful looking plate of food, and that's what I expect from Richard. That's what he can deliver. Luciana's main course was really good. The execution of the dessert wasn't quite right, but I do love the fact that she's bringing those beautiful Brazilian influences into her cookery. Luciana's pushed herself to the boundaries today, and I'm really impressed with what she's done. Danny did some great cooking today. 
And to get the balance of the curry, the curry oil and the little curry beignets just right and not overpowering is a clever thing to do. The critics didn't like Danny's dishes, but I absolutely loved them. His rice pudding, they didn't like it, but I loved it. We both loved that rice pudding. We've got some very good chefs in this room, which is going to make this judging hard for us. I see some talent really starting to, to take off. I've seen things in here today that have made me proud of where these chefs started and where they are today. I completely it, it, agree on that. It, it sort of yeah. breaks my heart to say goodbye to one because I think they all deserve a chance. Wow, what a fantastic round. Cooking for some of the best critics in the country is always going to be hard. But I thought at the end of it, Monica and I have had some fantastic food today. Well done, great job. We've made a decision. And we've decided to put all four of you through. <laughs> can I scream? You can scream. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. My tissue. <laughs> I thought I was having a laugh, you know, I thought I'd just put my leg to make me feel worse. Because I deserved it. I still can't believe it. It's just crazy. I'm surprised, I'm happy, I'm confused, I'm just everything. I, it's weird feeling so many emotions at once, to be honest. I, I don't know how to react. Yeah, can't believe it. Yeah, I'm lost for words. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible, yeah, amazing. I'm very happy, very happy. I could not believe. I can't explain how do I feel now, but I'm just happy, happy, happy. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Next time, it's the professional MasterChef semi finals. The 12 best chefs return to battle it out for their place in the competition. Such a mix of stars are cooking here. What we definitely have in this room is our winner. I really feel like you're experimenting on me today. Wow. <laughs> it's delicious. Looks good and tastes great. That's it, I'm coming back. Book me a table, half past seven on Friday. This is a plate that is you at your very best.